light and darkness. He is everything. Amen. 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 You need to act like you know. Certainly during this time this week, he has been a light in darkness. And we have an elected president for the year 2021. Amen. And the word says, pray for those in authority. That's right. Much prayer is needed. Amen. Amen. And I have, um, I just have an announcement. But first, before I go to this announcement, I want us to put on your pretty face, although we have the mask on, but let your eyes shine because we have a, someone who is viewing us from Kingston, Jamaica. All right. And please forgive me if I mispronounce her your name, but it's Luet Uliette. Uliette Berry. Berry. She's from Kingston, Jamaica. Oh, and she's yeah. viewing us. She used to be a member. And she used to be a member here in San Lone. So let's welcome her. Amen. 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 Hi. Hallelujah. Okay. And my announcement is I know many of you have been asking about Operation Christmas Child. And we are going to participate this year. However, I have been lax on the job. So, we are going to be packing boxes next Sunday right after morning service. So, if you have any boxes or that you have already filled or anything that you want to include in the boxes, please bring them next Sunday right after service. We're going to be socially distancing, so you don't have to worry about that. We're going to be wearing our mask, and we're going to be packing back boxes, okay? If you have any questions, of course, you know you can either call me or see me after service. And I do have boxes today. So, amen? Amen. Amen. And I'm, guess what? I'm not saying how many boxes we're going to do. You all ought to be happy. <laughs> I heard some amens. But we're still going to do the best we can because we know that this is our world mission. And that's what we are. We are Missionary Baptist Church. Amen? Amen. amen. So now we're going to have our offering. So, and I'm going to turn it over to Pastor West. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. So often I say after that, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. For here we are outside, and the Lord is still with us. Amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Before we go to our offering, a couple things I want to share uh, with you. Um, those of you who did not yet give to the church anniversary, our 118th church anniversary, I believe there's a method for you to make an offering towards that today if you uh, desire to do so. To those who have given to our church anniversary offering, we thank you so much um, for doing that. Um, all right, let us bow our heads in prayer. Most holy and everlasting God, our Heavenly Father, we do thank and praise you for this day. And we thank you, O Heavenly Father, for this opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth in the midst of your creation. We pray, O oh Heavenly Father, that you will bless our offerings that are collected today. May they be sacrificial, may they be sanctified, and may they be to your glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This one is for the 118th anniversary. So. Do you want me to go around? Um, yeah, I guess that's what we have to do. You need to let them know it is the anniversary. Brethren, we are collecting our church anniversary offering. If you have an offering for our church anniversary, this is a special offering in addition to your offering to the church. We invite you to put it into this basket. Amen? Or online. We're going to get to that in the mess. We're going to get to that.
Good morning and God bless everyone. As the word said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord. And right now our house is outside. So I'm going to sing an old song that's going to require your participation. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. All right now. I need some clapping to back me up. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Well, can't nobody do me like Jesus. He Picked me up, picked me up, yeah. Show me how to run. He picked me up, my friend. Oh, can nobody do me like Jesus? Can nobody? Do me like the Lord, what can nobody, yeah. Do me like Jesus, he's my friend. One more time, he's my friend. Most holy and everlasting God, we thank and praise you for this offering that has been gathered today. We thank you for your soldiers, your children, who have given out of their love for you. We pray, Lord, you'll take this offering and multiply it, that it may be used for the glory of your kingdom, for the advancement of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can you only imagine? Amen. I wouldn't want to miss that. I can only imagine what it will be like when I find myself walking by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face, Lord, is before me. I can only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine to be surrounded by your glory. What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Oh, I can only imagine. I can only imagine when that day will come. When Standing near the sun, I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, Lord, forever worship you. I can only imagine. 
imagine I can only imagine Sing that song, sister. Sing it. To be surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence to my knees? Will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can know. To be surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence to my knees? Will I fall? Will I say hallelujah? Will I be able to speak out? This is our war cry. Y'all can praise God better than that. Can you imagine what it's going to be like? Every day is going to be Sunday. To be in the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Something to look forward to. Amen. 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 Well, according to the agenda, it is preaching time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you brought a Bible or if you have a phone, I want to invite you to turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 2. You have it, say amen. amen. I shall begin reading at the 42nd verse, Acts chapter 2, beginning with verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together 
and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone who had need. Every day, listen to me now, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The title of our sermon today is Keys to Greatness. Keys to Greatness. Father, we thank you again. We ask you to show up and show out. Make your word clear, plain, and understandable. And may we leave here, Lord, challenged to be led to your keys to greatness. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Can everybody hear me? Yes. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. This morning, we pause and celebrate the roots and origin of the Siloam Baptist Church of Norristown. Somebody give God some praise. Like every church, Siloam has its own unique history. When Siloam started, it did not meet at the usual Sunday service time. Instead, for the convenience of those who worked on Sundays they literally met on Thursdays, or as it was called, the maid's day off. Over the years, the Siloam branch of Zion moved to several different locations. You thought they were always here. But first, they met at a Chinese laundry, and then they went to the Odd Fellows building, and then they finally ended up here on Willow Street. How many of you know that good things are sometimes worth waiting for? And from there, this church grew in spirit through the ministry of its leaders and the gradual development of the land that they purchased. And over the years, Siloam has made a mark for the kingdom of God in this community and beyond. Literally, particularly now as we broadcast our services, people literally in other countries are listening to us right now. Somebody say, hello. 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 <laughs> Over the years, Siloam has made a mark for the kingdom of God in this community and beyond. Through its strong leaders and pastors and faithful, committed, people and hard-working members, Siloam was a church on the move. And in recognition uh, was not just from black folk, but from most people in the Norristown community realized that something big was happening here at Siloam. Brothers and sisters, we have a great heritage. And we have made a great contribution to Norristown and beyond. For our ministry has long reached further than our background. But to other towns, to other communities, and even to the continent of Africa. For through the National Baptist Foreign Mission Board, we did a mission trip there. And then recently, through the work of the American Baptist foreign mission ministry, we also went to Africa. Brothers and sisters, Siloam has been a great church to me. Sure, it's not perfect, but no church, I said no church, is perfect. But we are a church to be God's house of hope, of healing, and of wholeness. Am I right about that? Amen. 
This morning, I want to take us back to our beginnings long before 1903. And this morning, I want to challenge us to go back, all the way back to the true beginnings of the church. And that takes us back to the days of Jesus and after his death and resurrection and ascension to heaven. Today, I want to take you back to the time and the place where God created and empowered his church that would one day give birth to a family of faith who knows, which we know today as the Siloam Baptist Church of Norristown. Now, while we say and declare that our church began in 1903, some 129 years ago, the truth is this church and all churches have their roots that go back literally to the day of Pentecost. This morning, I want to share with you where we get the power and the energy to keep this church going. Now, the answer to this question may seem obvious, but if this is true, why are so many churches closing up and locking their doors never to have another service again? Why is it that so many churches are losing more members than they are taking in? And why is it that so many churches struggle to pay their bills and have to cut back because they cannot afford the expenses that they have normally paid for? Has anybody here seen or used or been to a church that has been going through hard times like this? Am I making this up? Am I, am I telling you something that is not true? These are challenging times for the body of Christ. Whether it's closing their doors or can't fill the pews or can't pay the bills or whatever, these are, saints, challenging times for God's people. But here's the real sorry point. It doesn't have to be that way. Y'all didn't hear me. It doesn't have to be such hard times, but it is. Salom, as we celebrate our anniversary, I want to share with you what we can do and what other churches can do to turn this trend around, to move from, from churches closing to churches open, opening to move to churches that are reopening and restoring themselves to that they may be God's house of hope, healing and wholeness where they are. And even if the church is not in danger of closing, it's getting harder and harder to keep things going well and to fuel the fire of the Holy Spirit. May I ask you to turn in your Bibles if you brought a Bible to the book of Acts, chapter 2. For here we see the fresh beginnings of the church. Like a mother birthing a child, so our Lord and Savior birthed the church to continue the work that began in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that Jesus had returned to the Father in heaven, the question was, what will we do now? Who is going to keep the movement going? And the answer to this question is the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Spirit of God, which was God himself. And the Spirit who enabled a small group of followers to literally win hundreds, if not thousands to Christ. Not because of the apostles preaching, not because of the singing, but because of who they were preaching about. Jesus the Christ, who came, who lived, who died, and who rose again. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. One of the things I learned as a young preacher is that people do not come to Christ because of me. Hello, somebody. They come to Christ because they are moved by the Holy Spirit, 
working within them, working on their heart, working on their mind until finally they say, I yield. I yield. He's the one, my friends, who showed them the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the one who opened the windows of heaven so that they could see what God could do for them. Oh, I'm here to tell you that when the people had an encounter with Jesus, they made a decision to follow Jesus and to be born again. And all of this happened because of the work of the Holy Spirit. You know who the Holy Spirit is. He is God in the Spirit. And when a church operates when a church has an encounter with the Holy Spirit, three things happen. Are you still with me? Three things happen. Number one, the Holy Spirit gives life, gives life to the church. The Holy Spirit gives life to the church. Have you ever been to a church that was dead? Hello. You ever been to a church? You walk in and the people are just mumbling and walking around. And when they get together, they finally try to sing a song. Nobody's really singing the song. Nobody's clapping their hands. And Lord, no, ain't nobody going to say amen. That's a dead church. They go through the motions, friends. But it's not in their hearts. It's not in their minds. And most importantly, it's not in their spirits. How many of you know that there are still churches like this today? But there are churches only in name only. If you want to be alive and have Christ alive in you, you need the Holy Spirit. You need to let him to be in your life. You need to let him fire you up. And you also need to let him correct your ways. Anybody here ever have an experience when you were thinking about doing something, you knew it wasn't right, but it looked good, it tasted good, it felt good. Can I go there? But then the Holy Spirit got a hold of you. And the Holy Spirit began to work on you and tell you, no, no, no. Don't you dare. You better stop in the name of love. Y'all get that on the way home today. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. And pretty soon you will receive, the Bible says to, the, said to these disciples, pretty soon you will receive the fire of the Holy Spirit in you. Sometimes people have asked me, why do you guys make so much noise? And I tell them, it's not us. It's the Holy Spirit in us. When the early church received the Holy Spirit, it gave life to the church. And you think about it. Even in this church, when we let go and let God move in us and to praise him, you will sense the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Am I right about that? Amen. Have you ever been in the church when Sister Sharon sings some of those songs? You know the Holy Spirit is in the church. Or when somebody is praying at the altar and you feel them praying, not just words, but they're praying from the depths of their heart and you know that sin is being moved, that sickness is being moved by their prayers, you can sense the presence of the Holy Spirit. You will sense his presence. And isn't that a beautiful thing? My Bible says that on the day of Pentecost, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, how about us? And how about right now? Second thing to look for here is the presence of the Holy Spirit and how he pulled the church together. Amen. How the Holy Spirit pulled the church together. 
Acts chapter 2 talks about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And Acts chapter 2 verse 4 says, All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. And you know what, Salome? God wants to do that through us today. The gift of the Holy Spirit was not just for 2,000 years ago. It is for today. And if you will open your life, your soul, and your spirit to him, God will begin to do miracles through you that you never thought possible. That cousin, that nephew, that sister who just didn't want anything to do with the church in her life. But when he or she sees the movement of the Holy Spirit working in you, he or she becomes curious and open to you sharing Christ with them and to let them know what Christ can do in their lives. Yes, Lord. Brothers and sisters, if you don't believe me, just try. Just give God a try. I dare you. I double dare you to try reaching out to someone by faith and watch and see what God will do. Yes, Brothers, let God use you. Whether you have a tongue in your mouth or a tongue from heaven, let God speak through you any way he pleases. And you will be surprised what God will do. Then lastly, then lastly in this passage, it talks about the presence of the Holy Spirit and how it gave power to the members to do whatever the Lord wants or whatever the Lord needs them to do. You have, heard, have you ever heard the old saying, God will not give you more than you can handle? And that's true, but that is only true because through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can do anything. Y'all didn't get that. There's nothing we cannot do in Jesus' name when we have the power of the Holy Spirit working in us and for us. Tap somebody on the shoulder. I know we were supposed to be. Point somebody. I'm sorry. We're, we're, we're being. Point at somebody. Look them in the eye and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can do anything, anything, amen. But this is only true because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I want this Holy Spirit. I need this Holy Spirit. When I think about this church and its long, rich history, I see the hand of God and the movement of the Holy Spirit. And Siloam, as we move into a new year, I believe the 119th year, he will do it again and again and again. And if we submit our lives to him and let him fill us with the Holy Spirit, Siloam, he is real today. Amen. And on this anniversary Sunday, I can think, I cannot think of anything better than to let the Spirit use us to keep us in this ministry and to keep this church going. So let us, my brothers and sisters, be faithful to God to allow him to use us to be his instruments in a dark and dreary world. Yes, we got a new president coming. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. But watch this. Watch this. He can't do it without Jesus. Y'all didn't get it. You clapped for him, but you didn't clap for Jesus. He can't do it. Without Jesus, yes, Lord. we got to pray for him. Yes. I don't mean just say, oh, bless the president. We got to pray for him. Yes, Lord. Yes. That he will hear from God. That he will have the courage to say no to some of the craziness in Washington, D.C. 
that he will have the opportunity to reach out to people who have needs that nobody else wants to touch. Amen. That's what the Holy Spirit wants from us, to be instruments to take his love, his grace, and his power to those who stand in need. And to let them know that all things are possible Amen. in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify your name. What a great God, what a mighty God, what an, what an eternal God you are. And so, Father, we thank you and we praise you for the power of your Holy Spirit that has kept this church alive for all of these years. Now, Lord, don't leave us now. Oh, we need you now, maybe more than ever. So come, Holy Spirit, heavenly dove, with all thy quickening power. Renew, revive, restore, revive. Have your way, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, with every head bowed, and every eye closed, I want to speak to you today who may not know about this Holy Spirit. You may have heard about him. You may have had people tell you about him. But I want you to know God loves you so much that he brought you to this place so that you could have this Holy Spirit come and live inside of you. I'm not talking about having an experience with the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about having a life with the Holy Spirit. Right now, that can be you. That can be your life if you would only say yes to Christ. So if you're here today and you have not yet accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord of your life. This is your moment. This is your time. Would you bow your heads with me? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that your Holy Spirit will move from heart to heart, breast to breast, person to person, and mind to mind. Touch, Lord God, that person who needs you in a special way right now. You know them better than anyone else knows them because you made them and you love them enough to have died for them. Now, Lord, I pray that you will encourage that man, that woman, that boy, that girl to raise his or her hand and say, I want Jesus to be in my life. You said, Lord, if we ask, it shall be given. We believe you today. We trust in you today. And so we ask you, Lord, to move, to move, move all the obstacles away, to move my brother, move my sister, to yield to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, while every head is still bowed, every eye is closed, if you would like to receive this Christ into your life, would you raise your hand so I can pray with you? Just raise your hand so I can pray with you. I want this Jesus. I need this Jesus. I want the promise of eternal life to be real in my life. Is that you? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Amen. Father, we thank you that your word has gone forth. We pray that it's found a fertile place in each and every one of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hope and pray you've been blessed by the service today. Hope and pray that you have found something that you can take home with you, share with someone else. And we pray that you'll return to our service uh, next Sunday. Whether we're outside, inside, or where we're at, we're going to be praising the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Father God, we ask that you bless us as we prepare to depart from this place. May you never, ever depart from our presence. Go with us, guide us, and lead us until we meet again in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm.
Amen. Amen. God bless you.